On the 20th of April, 1587, there is yet another really important event in the story of the relationship between England and Spain, and it involves Sir Francis Drake, who by this point is already a hero to the English because he's circumnavigated the globe and he's captured lots of Spanish treasure. He really is a villain to the Spanish, though, so much so that they call him El Draque, the dragon, because of his actions. And this event takes place when he launches a surprise attack on Spain, and specifically on the port of Cadiz. Cadiz was Spain's most important Atlantic port. So remember that Spain does a lot of trade with its colonies all the way around the world and a lot of that trade goes in through Cardiz. So it's important, but that's not why Drake attacks it. He attacks it because it's also where Philip is beginning to build up his invasion forces for his planned invasion of England. And he's been planning this, apparently, since the end of 1585. At the end of 1585, he tells the Pope that he's planning an invasion of England. But the problem with invading England is that on most of its sides, England is surrounded by sea. It is attached to Scotland, but Scotland is no longer any good as a potential ally for Spain because it has a Protestant king, James VI, and England and Scotland have signed the Treaty of Berwick, where they've agreed to work together. So if he's going to invade England, Philip is going to need a fleet of boats. And so he starts to build something that we call an armada. An armada isn't quite the same as a fleet. I've looked it up. It comes from the Latin word armar, which means to arm. So an armada is specifically a fleet of boats that is very heavily armed and intended for fighting. And there is one being built between 1586 and 1587 at the port of Cardiz. Francis Drake asks Elizabeth's permission to go and attack it. And Elizabeth grants it and allows him to use four Royal Naval, so official English boats, official England war boats, four Royal Naval galleons. And those are called the Elizabeth Bonadventure, which Drake captains himself. The Golden Lion, The Rainbow and the Dreadnought. And in return for allowing Drake to use these Royal Naval Galleons, Elizabeth stands to gain 50% of whatever wealth and riches that he manages to capture from the Spanish. As well as this, merchants from London send an additional 20 ships with Drake. Because remember, privateers often made a lot of money. So it's a well-financed mission. Sets off on the 12th of April from Plymouth on the south coast. A week after it's set off, Elizabeth 
sends a boat or a ship out after it with a letter. And the letter basically tells Drake to call off the mission. However, the ship carrying it doesn't even get out of port because the wind is wrong and Elizabeth probably sent it so that she could deny all knowledge. She could say that she hadn't really wanted Drake to do it. Also, Sir Francis Walsingham at this time, his face is now hidden by the letter, let's move him, feeds misinformation about the mission to the ambassador in Paris. So he feeds the wrong information about the attack to the ambassador in Paris because he knows that the English ambassador in Paris is working as a Spanish spy. And that makes sure that when Drake attacks, the Spanish are taken completely by surprise. So the attack on Cardiz is launched on the 20th of April and it is incredibly successful. Drake manages to sink a number of Spanish ships, Spanish warships. We don't quite know how many. Drake reports back that he managed to sink 37. But he might have been playing it up. Philip, on the other hand, re receives a report that 24 ships have been sunk, but they may have been playing it down. As well as this, Drake also destroys huge amounts of the timber stores at Cardiz. And this is really important, firstly, because timber will be used to build new boats. Secondly, because seasoned, seasoned timber was also used to make things like the barrels and the boxes that were taken on board ship to hold food and water. And it needs to be seasoned wood. So that causes a real problem for the Spanish as well. As well as this, he also captures four ships and all the treasure on them and all the goods. And the attack lasts for three days. Then, because it's not really very safe for privateers to hang around the Spanish coast, they sail out to the Azores, which the map is too small for, but it's a little group of Portuguese islands round about here. And they lie in wait for Spanish ships that are coming from India or from the Americas. And they manage to capture a ship called Sao Felipe. And they manage to capture over 100,000 pounds worth Of treasure from that so they make a lot of money to take home back to England as well. Now this attack has a number of results it is absolutely dreadful for Spanish morale it really makes a mess of their invasion plans it holds them up terribly. Drake coins the phrase himself singeing the king of spain's beard because it's so such a personal attack and it, it really gets so close to philip and makes life so difficult for him it becomes known as singeing the king of spain's beard so there's philip with his beard on five fire give it some smoke make him look a bit unhappy as he no doubt was after this and it's an event that becomes known as singeing the king of spain's beard as well as this though it just really holds up philip's plans of an invasion 
because he's lost a lot of boats and he's also lost the timber that they might use to build another one and even when they do replace those boats the timber isn't as high quality so those boats are not very good quality and the barrels and the boxes that they use for food and water are also leaky and they split on the voyages so this is a real difficulty for Philip and it's really really bad for the Spanish it's really good for the English obviously and Drake returns a hero once again however he's also aware that the Spanish invasion although it's been held up is at some stage going to take place and he writes to Elizabeth And he says, prepare in England strongly. And mostly by sea. Stop him now. Him being Philip, the King of Spain. Stop him now and stop him forever. Because he knows that even though he's managed to hold it up, sooner or later Elizabeth is going to be facing her biggest threat yet. 